Well, I got a lot of books behind me, a lot of books in front of me. Let's get into the September comic haul. Welcome back to Comics Are Dope. I'm BJ Kicks, and this, this is my September comic haul. Now, back when I rebranded this channel a couple of years ago, I kind of swore off comic hauls. I felt like they might encourage the wrong behavior, and I want this channel to be about the stories that we're reading, not just about the stories that we are buying. Um, but over the last couple of months, I've developed some really cool relationships with different publishers, and I feel like the best way to repay their kindness and generosity is to show you their books. And so we're going to get into all of the books that I grabbed this month, uh, September 2024. Some of these I paid for, some of these I didn't. I'm going to be very clear about which ones I paid for and which ones I didn't. And uh, hopefully, you know, you see some of these books and they do pique your interest. I would just say, you know, give it a couple of days, wait on it, and think hard about whether or not you want any of these books before you decide to go grab them. Now, this video is brought to you by our channel sponsor, Organic Price Books. Uh, they have been our partners for almost three years in this game. And uh, you know, it's been more than three years since we've been working with OPB, but they are, in my opinion, the best place to go for collected editions. Uh, there's nobody that's going to give you the uh, combination of great packaging, quick shipping, and awesome customer service uh, to go along with the great value they have on their books. Now, speaking of values, there is a sale going on right now, like right this second. It's an overstock sale. Uh, sometimes distributors will overship books to different retailers depending on their order numbers and stuff like that. So there are a lot of books sitting in the uh, OPB warehouse just waiting for someone to take them home. So there's a whole collection. If you click the link down in the description below, uh, it'll take you straight to the distribution overstock collection. As of right now, there are over 252 titles in stock ready to be shipped out right now. Uh, and you can get an extra 25% off everything in that collection. It's uh, discounts automatically applied during checkout. So whatever price you see right here, just multiply that times 0.75 and that's the amount you are going to pay. So Huge shout out to OPB. Now, if you do decide that, you know, maybe some of this stuff is older or whatever, you don't want the sale collection, then go ahead, browse their regular uh, selection. You can get stuff that's in stock, stuff that you're uh, wanting to pre-order, even some back order stuff. And you can do all of that and save money with the codes BJKicks or BJKicks ship it together at checkout. But that's enough of all the pre-show antics. Let's get into this month's comic haul. And we're going to start with books that I grabbed from the channel sponsor, Organic Price Books. So you guys know I haven't purchased an omnibus in a while. Uh, it's been a minute, but uh, I had to hit up my man JP and uh, see what was shaking. They had a damage sale a while back, and so I got to claim a few damaged items, and I'm very excited about them. This first one, this is the Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man. Brand New Day Omnibus Volume 1. Now, this picks up directly after the J. Michael Straczynski run on Spider-Man. So, uh, of course, after One More Day and the controversy that that was. But um, it means that there is a brand new status quo. In fact, the first issue in this book is called The Brand New Status Quo <laughs> uh, for Peter Parker. And what I love about this is is that there are a lot of writers on this book. There are a lot of artists in this book, a lot of different art styles. Um, some of the art that's kind of stopped me in my tracks was by Paolo Segura. Um, but there's a lot of really, really cool art in this book. Uh, don't worry, I'm gonna do an overview of each of these Omnis. There are three I'm gonna do an overview of. Uh, I'll probably do that on the OPB channel. So subscribe to them if you haven't already. Um, is that going to stay there? Maybe it will. Next up, next thing I grabbed from the OPB damage sale was this. This is Ultimate Spider-Man, Volume 4, uh, by Brian Michael Bendis, Stuart Eminen. Is it David LaFuente? Um, but anyway, this is Ultimate Spider-Man, Volume 4. If I'm not mistaken, this is the last volume of Ultimate Spider-Man 
before you get into Miles Morales. Let's see. This covers Ultimate Spider-Man 112 to 133, the third annual Ultimatum Spider-Man Requiem 1 and 2, Ultimate Spider-Man the 2009 series 1 through 15. So there is no Ultimate Fallout. Was that in Volume 3? So, I don't know. I think this is the end of Ultimate Spider-Man. It can't be, because Peter Parker is still here. So maybe there's a Volume 5 left to go. Um, and I guess the question is, are you going to buy Volume 5, or are you going to buy the Death of Ultimate Spider-Man omnibus? And uh, I don't know, I guess the jury's still out. Although, that Death of kind of already came and went, didn't it? So check, see if it's in stock anywhere. That's not a safe place for me to put this book, but I'm going to do it anyway. The last book I grabbed from the OPB damage sale or damage section is this. This is X-Men, the Mutant Massacre Prelude Omnibus. Now, you guys saw I did a video uh, a little while back um, because I bought Ultimate or excuse me, yeah, Uncanny X-Men Volume 5. I bought that omnibus. And then shortly after I got it, they announced this one. And this omnibus basically is the entire Ultimate or Uncanny X-Men Volume 5 and uh, like three-fourths of the X-Factor Volume 1 omnibus all mashed into one. And like I knew that, I knew that it collected all that, but somehow I didn't think about just how massive this book is. It does not fit on my X-Men shelf. I don't know where I'm going to store this book permanently, but... I got it. It's in the collection. And I'm glad I grabbed this because I knew I wasn't going to get the uh, the X Factor omnibus. That just wasn't going to be a thing. Um, so if I could only get one, I'm glad I got that. Now, let's put those back there. Well, I can actually put this down. All right. So we got the uh, OPB package out of the way. Huge shout out to JP for sending those my way. Um, and now... Uh, another uh, partner that we have on this channel that is fairly new, um, but I've been just floored that these this company would even, you know, look my way. But we've been blessed to have a partnership with Marvel Comics. They send out trade paperbacks periodically for me to check out and show to you guys. Now, all of these behind me, you've seen all of these. I've woven them into different videos on the channel over the course of the month. Uh, but I did want to show you guys some other collections that you haven't seen on the channel just yet. So right here, this is the Venom Modern Era Epic Collection. It's called Shiver. This is the story by Daniel Way. Uh, this was previously collected in a Venom Complete Collection um, that has since gone out of print. And so now they've got it in this, mar this uh, Marvel Modern Era Epic Collection. This collects... The 2003 Venom series issues 1 through 18. Uh, so 2003 to 2004. Cover price on this was $44.99. Uh, so I love these thick trade paperbacks. We're going to talk a little bit more about Venom later. This is a more modern Venom story. I say modern. 2003 was 20 years ago. Feel old yet? I feel old. That's crazy. Um, and another thing we got, another epic collection. This is the Star Wars epic collection. Uh, the Rebellion, Volume 6, Volume 6 of The Rebellion. Now, I, for a while, was collecting all of the uh, the Dark Horse Spider-Man collect or Star Wars collection, uh, the Star Wars Legends line. I decided to sell that off and uh, just focus on the in-canon Marvel Star Wars story. So the Jason Aaron run to Kieran Gillen and... Uh, Greg Pak, all that. That's the stuff that I collect. But it's cool to see some of this. Like, um, just this is like more. You've got like some straight up adaptations of like Return of the Jedi. So that's really cool. Like, look at Lando in there. So there's some cool stuff in this epic collection. Um, and if I had more time or maybe fewer books, I'd show an overview of everything. But we just ain't got that type of time today. So shout out to Marvel for that. And then uh, we got some thin trades, some regular old trade paperbacks from Marvel that I wanted to show you guys, starting with Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 1, Married with Children. 
Uh, Ultimate Spider-Man Volume 1, this book is awesome. I'm, I'm picking this up in singles right now, and it's just so good month to month, but this reads even better in trade, in my opinion. This, um, without spoiling anything, covers the first six issues of the new Ultimate Spider-Man series, and uh, as the title indicates, Peter Parker is married with children. I think some of the twists, some of the things that are different between this Peter Parker and 616 Peter Parker, it's just, this is the Peter Parker book to buy. Of all the stuff on shelves right now, you gotta grab this. Next up is Daredevil. This is actually volume two of Solid and Ahmed's Daredevil series. It's called Hell to Pay. And um, I haven't read volume one of Solid and Ahmed's Daredevil. What I will say is the art in this book, that's pretty good arting there. Um, let's see who's on the art on this. We've got Aaron Cooter. And then we got Stefano Raphael, John Boz Bozaldua, Eric Kodas, uh, Ken Lashley. So there's a lot of actually, a lot of artists in volume two, but really like it. A lot of good art in here. So that's dope. Next up, told you we we're going to talk more about Venom. This is Venom, uh, the saga of Eddie Brock. Now, don't let this book fool you, right? This cover seems like probably more modern. I feel like this was the Alex Ross cover during the Villains Month a while back at Marvel. But this is actually uh, a sort of throwback collection of Venom. Maybe it was time to go with that Venom uh, trailer that we just saw for Venom 3. But this actually collects the uh, Amazing Spider-Man 300 and then 315 to 317. 374, Spider-Man, The Trial of Venom, number one, and material from uh, Amazing Spider-Man 375. So this is basically all of the early Eddie Brock Venom stories. So the first appearance of Venom and then, you know, him bonding with uh, Eddie Brock, bonding with the Venom symbiote and becoming the character that we all know and love. So him bonding with the symbiote and becoming the character that we all know and love today. So really cool stuff. Got some Todd McFarlane artwork in there, some Mark Bagley artwork in there. Uh, I think some Eric Larson in here. Jim Craig, not Eric Larson. Todd McFarlane, Mark Bagley, Jim Craig. Nice stuff. You can pick this up. Cover price on it is only $24.99. And every book that I'm covering here today, just about every book, is available at Organic Price Books, so you can go ahead and order them right now. Next up, this is Spider Punk Arms Race. This was a four issue miniseries written by Cody Ziegler. This is actually his second Spider Punk miniseries, but Spider Punk Arms Race, written by Cody Ziegler. Um, let's see who does the art in this book. Justin Mason is the artist, uh, Maury Hollowell does the colors. Uh, Rico Renzi actually colors one issue in here as well. And Travis Lanham on letters. Takashi Okazaki on covers. All these covers, these pinup images here, are actually colored by Rico Renzi, who I recently had on Comics Are Dope, the podcast. This was cool. What I like about this is that uh, he ends up teaming up with Shuri, the Black Panther. Uh, so that's really cool. Um, but Cody Ziegler, honestly, is just one of my favorite names at Marvel. And so... Excited to have this mini series and check it out. So those cover all of the sort of sponsored books from Marvel. So huge shout out to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for considering us and allowing us to showcase these books for you. I say us, I guess I mean me, but whatever. So there's some Marvel representation. Now, what's funny is I didn't really buy any DC in this past month, except I did get um, my latest subscription or shipment from Fan Home. So I did the Fan Home Legends of Batman. So for the next 48 months, I'm going to be receiving uh, a couple of Batman hardcovers every single month. So my package from them this month included uh, Batman Zero Year Part 2 and Batman and Son. Uh, this written by Scott Snyder, art by Greg Capullo. This written by uh, Grant Morrison, art by Andy Kubert, I want to say. Uh, yeah, Andy Kubert on Batman and Son. This obviously being the debut of Damian Wayne, who is my favorite Robin. 
Um, so cool stuff. But yeah, this honestly, I'm a slightly disappointed with my fan home purchase. Um, they're supposed to come with like free gifts and stuff. And they said the free gifts are out of stock. So I haven't received them yet. Um, even though I paid extra just to get those gifts. Um, so we shall see the my package number three just shipped, but it hasn't gotten here yet. So maybe it'll be the free gifts will be in that shipment. Maybe they won't. I don't know. You guys have been asking me to review these fan home books, by the way. And um, I'll try. I'll try to work them in the schedule. We'll see what happens. But just so you know, Legend of Batman uh, shipment two did arrive this month. Now, let's see. That's kind of the only DC stuff in the collection this month. So, but I did wear a DC shirt, so they got representation. Um, oh no, there's one more DC book. This is one that I bought from Ollie's. This is Superman Year One. Superman Year One written by Frank Miller with art by John Romita Jr. Uh, funny enough, this was my second Black Label book. I had purchased Batman Last Night on Earth uh, on newsstands or in the comic shop. Uh, back when it was brand new, I was brand new to comics at the time. Uh, and I didn't really get it, but I hadn't read the Snyder and Capullo Batman run yet. So whatever. This felt like a good jumping in point. Oh, it's year one. It's Frank Miller. It's all the rage. And um, honestly, I didn't get past issue two when I read it the first time. Uh, and I haven't revisited it yet. But there's some pretty cool art in here. And for $6.99, which is how much I paid for this at Ollie's, I was like, eh, I'll take the chance. If nothing else, it's fun to look at. So I think that that is all the DC that I got this month. Now, since we're at Ollie's, there's another book that I grabbed from Ollie's. This is the Fantastic Four uh, Fate of the Four, written by Chip Zdarsky Art by Jim Chung, Valerio Schietti, uh, Ramon Perez, John Dell, Walden Wong, Frank Martin, and Federico Blee. Uh, so this collects basically uh, the Marvel two-in-one run, two in one run from Chip Zdarsky. Um, notably, uh, Reed and Sue are not in this book, or at least not uh, at the beginning. This is a Ben Grimm and Johnny Storm team-up book. And honestly, it looks really cool. Uh, this was liquidated not too long ago. It actually is still in stock at Organic Price Books, um, and it's included in that uh, overstock sale. But if you did not, uh, if you don't pick it up now, there's also a trade paperback coming later or early next year. So you'll still have opportunities to buy it. So check it out. All right. I think that is all the big two representation we've got here. Now, got to give a couple of shout outs to... Uh, some pretty cool comic publishers that sent us some books. So this one from IDW is Beneath the Trees Where Nobody Sees. I did a review of this book and overview, so you can check that out. I'll link it up in the channel card. I think the channel card's there, but it could be there. Either way, I will link it um, in the channel card so you can see. This was a great, uh, this te it's technically horror. It definitely counts as horror, uh, but it was it's a horror murder mystery with these fuzzy little Richard scary inspired animals. So the art may look like a children's book. It's not a children's book. I definitely had to like swoop in and grab this out of Squeak's hand when she came and grabbed, she thought it, I don't know, but yeah, just no, not a kid's book, but a cool book. I enjoyed it as Patrick Horvath's debut and it was stellar. So loved that. I don't know if it won the best new series Eisner, but it was definitely nominated and it deserved the win. Um, another couple of books we've got these from the new press. Uh, this one is Lies My Teacher Told Me. Uh, this is an adaptation, a graphic adaptation of the James Lowen classic Lies My Teacher Told Me. Um, this was adapted and illustrated by Nate Powell, who you might know from the March series of books. He did a book called uh, Save It for Later. Uh, he's done a lot of like these sort of um, progressive political texts, um, but sort of modernizing them and humanizing them with his artistry. So that's really cool. Um, and this was a really fun and entertaining way 
to digest the original lies my teacher told me. So overview of this is also on the channel, uh, but also from the new press, who is that publisher, is this. This is Charisma's Turn. It's a graphic novel written by Monique Cubson with art by Amanda Jones. This one um, is about this girl, Charisma. Um, I actually just read it this morning, but this is about this girl, Charisma. She's a middle school student who's kind of struggling. She's got a hot temper. She doesn't have the best situation going on at home, and she struggles to find her place in the classroom until there's like a sort of teacher or a guidance counselor that comes along and sort of sees her gifts and recognizes them like this fight that is in her is really just like, you know, the seeds of what makes a good leader. And so she sort of helps her find her place in this academic setting um, and helps her helps expand her view of the world. So I thought this was a really good book. Um, I'll probably let my daughter read it uh, here in a few. But one thing I will say is this is a book. It's a graphic novel, but it almost in some ways kind of it. It's kind of crosses, it toes the line between like a middle grades reader and an actual comic. I feel like, you know, there are some like, you know, mistakes with like lettering, not mistakes, but there are some areas where it's like, it's clear that the, the creative team is not necessarily well versed in comics and like balloons and word placement and like the lettering overall, I think is what they could have done better with. But the story, it was amazing watching this little girl get turned on to, to artists or authors like Toni Morrison um, and really like learn her place in society. Definitely a recommend. Very. It's I don't know, man. I'm a black dad and it just feels different when you have a book where you feel like you're seen and your kids are seen and you can give them give this to them and know that they can relate to it. So huge thanks to the new press for both. Charisma's turn and lies my teacher told me. Now, another uh, set of books we grabbed um, from you know our sponsors here. Uh, really excited that I've been partnering with Dynamite Entertainment uh, to bring you different creator interviews and promote their stuff as of late. And you know what brought me to Dynamite was Disney's. We got a few Disney collections here, starting off with Lilo and Stitch, Volume One, Ohana by Greg Pak, uh, with art by Julia Giacomino. Uh, this book is really cool. Basically, Stitch um, and and Lilo and Nani and like their whole found family has kind of settled. This is after the events of the first movie. And he settled into family life. Uh, you know, Ohana means family. Family means no one gets left behind. Well, when some alien robots that want to uh, be more mean go and like they're hunting for stitch they're trying to get his dna so they can make themselves more like stitch he realizes that he's putting his family in danger the longer he stays around them and uh you know antics ensue so this was a really fun book uh the series is still ongoing so go ahead and grab this it's available in trade paperback for 19.99 it's available in hardcover for i think 20 excuse me 13.99 is this trade paperback hardcover i think is 19.99 and uh, both are in stores right now. Next up, we got Maleficent, Volume 1. This is also a trade paperback. This actually collects the entire series. Uh, what you don't notice, maybe, is that these are digest size. So that there's the, how the size compares to a normal trade paperback collection. But anyway, Maleficent uh, is written and drawn by Sue Lee, also $13.99 cover price. What I love about this book is the art. I think I did an overview of it a few months ago, but Dynamite sent me another copy, so I wanted to show love. Another book I did an overview of a couple months ago, but again, came in fresh from Dynamite, which means I have two copies, which means there's going to be a giveaway at some point. So probably for the channel members. So shout out to you guys. Um, anyway, Gargoyles, Volume 1, here in Manhattan. This uh, basically takes place... This book is like the canon uh, season four of Gargoyles. If the first two seasons that actually aired are that. And then there was the other Gargoyles series uh, that was uh, published by a different company. 
which is basically season three. And then this picks up after the events of that series. Um, and it does take a little bit of time kind of reacclimating you to the world. But by issue four, it really picks up. And I'm really excited for volume two of this hardcovers to come out because that is where the story really goes full steam ahead. And I was glued in single issues. Anyway, Gargoyles, this is Greg Weissman, George Cambadeus. Very, very good stuff. Man, I promise we are getting to the end of this comic haul, but gotta shout out this one from Titan Comics is Jimi Hendrix, Purple Haze. This is written by uh, Mello Brown with DJ Ben Hamid. This has beautiful art by Tom Mandrake. I did an overview of this book earlier in uh, the month as well, so you can see just how beautiful that art is. This is oversized. It's actually just slightly taller than a Marvel Omnibus, so definitely worth the $29.99 cover price, but this is a book about Jimi Hendrix like basically being a cosmic freedom fighter in a way. Uh, really cool. Really, really cool. I can't say enough how great the world building in this book is as well as how great the art is in this book. Like every page of this is spectacular. This gets my highest praise and highest recommendation. So if you haven't already, go ahead, check this out. Uh, it's like I said, from Titan Comics, it's out everywhere now. And uh, you need to get your copy before this before they sell out because I don't know if they're getting a second printing run. So get it while it's out there. Jimi Hendrix, Purple Haze, amazing book. Um, and I think that's the last book that anyone sent me. So um, yeah, I think I've told you guys if I bought something or if somebody else sent it. Uh, this is a book that I supported on Kickstarter for my man, Damian Becton. This is Worlds Away, volume one. This collects the first four issues of Worlds Away. Um, and a, it's a great series. I can't wait for this to come back. Um, I had this in single issues. I bought them at Heroes Con uh, earlier this year, but having it in one perfect bound graphic novel, trade paperback, great stuff. Huge shout out to Damian Becton. Uh, and who does the art in this? Christian Prinesti. Dope. Very dope. Um, it's a sci-fi mother-daughter tale. Really heart, really heartfelt. Like This is a really emotional uh, book, but action-packed for sure. So that's that, Worlds Away. Another book that I purchased. Why would I buy a book when I got so much I need to read? Well, because I really am curious about this title. This is G.I. Joe from Skybound. This is the Real American Heroes, Volume 1. So this is the continuation of the very long-running Larry Hama G.I. Joe series. Um, and basically, yeah, Skybound did restart G.I. Joe with the Energon universe and Joshua Williamson's got a G.I. Joe book coming out soon. But for now, or even alongside that, Larry Hama can still tell his original story and pick up where it left off. So this collects issues 301 to 305 of G.I. Joe. And uh, this looks really cool. Written by Larry Hama. The art in this is by Chris Mooneyham. And it looks dope. What I love about it is like if you've never read G.I. Joe before, it literally explains everything you need to know on like the first three pages. So very cool to feel like you can pick up or jump right in on something that's got such a long, amazing legacy. And if that's not enough for you, check for the new jumping on point coming from Skybound later this year. But G.I. Joe, Real American Hero, uh, $14.99 cover price on this. I got this from my LCS. Shout out to Fight or Flight Comics. And... The last book that I'm going to cover on this haul, this actually was sent to me by Critical Entertainment. This is a package of their latest books that are hitting the direct market very soon. So we've got Planetary Expansion, which I believe I've covered on the channel before. Um, this is issue number three. I didn't have issue three before. Nice. And then this is The Cowboy with Many Hats. This is the series I was really curious about but also never had a copy of. So shout out to that. And then we've got Space Dragon. And this looks like a straight up graphic novel. Space Dragon. This is oversized as well. Like this does not look like, this is even bigger than the Jimi Hendrix book. So that's really cool. Big prestige looking book. And what's it about? Well, a dragon in space. 
what I love about uh, these critical entertainment titles is a lot of them are like silent books. So books without a lot of word balloons are very art for art focused, but it's like, it's almost like that, uh, that animated show primal where it's not like it's just pictures for the sake of pictures. Everything tells a story, but it's so much more challenging to tell a story without words and critical entertainment. They do a great job every single time. They had that one book uh, where it was like the dogs in the office and the cats were the bosses. And eventually there was like a revolt and they decided to just go outside. Like to be able to communicate and tell stories that efficiently with no word balloons. That's amazing stuff. So shout out to Critical Entertainment. This is written by Christopher Rada with art by Alonzo Molina Gonzalez. This is dope. Uh, you can be on the lookout. All of these books are going to be hitting the direct market soon if they haven't already. Um, Space Dragon comes out October 30th. That's really cool. Um, and I'm trying to see if they have any more uh, dates listed here. All right, so I don't see dates on the cowboy with many hats, so maybe those have already hit the market. But look out for Space Dragon. Pre-order at your LCS. Small press doing big things. They got distribution through Diamond, so really dope. Shout out to Critical Entertainment. And that, that is my comic haul. Let's see if we can do this. For old time's sake. There's no way I'm picking up all these books, but maybe we can get them all in the frame. I forgot. There's one last thing. I told you if you stuck around to the end, I'd show you something cool. These. <laughs> these are my Batmobile Crocs that I got um, from JD Sports. This is probably the stupid purchase of the month. Like, I did not need these at all. But I'm going to New York Comic Con next month. These are going to be a great shoe to wear with my sweats in the airport. And so... You know, in case they they, you know, randomly select me uh, to be searched and patted down and all the things. Oh, take off your shoes, young man, to slip out of my Batmobile Crocs. I should have ordered the gibbets. But um, what I will say is if you've never bought a pair of Crocs before, uh, I got these in a size eight. My true size is a nine. They fit just a tad snug, like not snug enough to bother me, but. Uh, this strap kind of pulls your foot forward. If it wasn't for this strap or if this strap was a little looser, I would say the eight fits like a true nine, uh, but they don't sell them in half sizes. So a full size up from this would have been way too big. So anyway, the Batmobile Crocs, uh, I've only worn them around the house like twice. And so far, they're not as comfortable as everybody says, but they are made of foam. So they're going to get more comfortable as uh, I wear them more. So that is the last comic related item I grabbed this month. And with that, that's going to do it for this haul video. I will see you in another one soon. Till then, stay safe, stay awesome, and read something dope today. Peace.